Now that we know the basics of sets, we are going to move on to set operations. So the union of sets is the first one that we'd like to look at. And the definition of the union of sets is essentially all of the values that are in both A and B. So think of union, which this is our um, notation for union. The way that I think about the union of sets is I think about it as a cup where you would put everything from set A in there and everything from set B in there. Um, essentially, we're adding the two sets together and since we don't have to worry about duplicates, then we don't worry about it. So here in the Venn diagram that I have drawn, we can see that set A is the set that includes the elements 1, 4, and 7. And set B, because that was everything contained in the set A circle, 1, 4, 7. And in set B, it contains the elements 4, 5, and 6. And so A union B would be 1, 4, and notice 4 is listed twice, but I'm only going to list it once, 5, 6, and 7. So using my picture, it's essentially everything here in either circle, including this part in the middle that's contained in both. So 1, 4, 5, 6, 7 would be all of the elements in the union. So we're looking for anything that is in one or the other. So again, you can think of this as an or. Uh, down here, I've included our um, inclusion exclusion uh, formula. We talk a lot about that later on, um, but this is essentially the formula that you would use here. If I had A union B, I could take all of the elements of A, which would be 1, 4, 7, and whoops, add all of the elements of B, which is 4, 5, 6, and then I'm just going to subtract anything that's here, and we haven't talked about this quite yet, but this is the intersection, and the intersection is here where it's in both sets, so I would subtract 4, and as you can see, what happens there is that just one of those 4s go away, and I would be left with 1, 4, 7, 5, 6, which is the answer that I came up with before. So the intersection of sets, if or, or if the union was sort of like an or, this is sort of like an and, and I'm saying the only way that it belongs in the intersection is if it's in set A and B. So here I'm saying A intersect B is the set of all X's such that X is in A and X is in B. So looking at my picture, before we get to that part I've written in blue, looking at my picture, I can see that the intersection, A intersect B in this example, is just four. Because here, I'm looking at a four that is contained in A, because remember A, was 1, 4, 7, and B was 4, 5, 6, and so the intersection is only elements that they have in common, and in this case that is only the element 4. So what I'm saying over here in blue is I'm saying if the intersection is empty, or the empty set, then A and B are said to be disjoint. So that's just another little vocabulary nugget that you can file away. Disjoint, my Venn diagram would look more like this because there would be no intersection or no elements that were contained in both sets A and B. The complement is another operation or another concept that is really important to understand. And the complement of a set is essentially any elements that are in the domain or in the universe that are not in that set. So here, as you can see, I've got not A, so it's kind of like not P of X, where P of X is any element in set A. We're essentially saying it's anything that's not in set A that's in the universe. So you might also see it written like this, 
that is the complement of A, but this is the way that I'm going to be writing it, not A. And essentially it says, it's in not A if X is in the universe, but X is not in set A. So let's take a look at our picture where I have set A and set B. So set A is everything inside of this circle, which is one, four, and seven. So the set not A would be any number that's not one, four, and seven. So I would say set A is zero, two, three. Notice these are all out in the universe. Still five and six, even though those are not just out here hanging out, they're in set B, not including the four, but five and six are not in set A. And then of course, eight and nine. So not A would be zero, two, three, five, six, eight, nine. Let's say I wanted not B. Again, that's all the digits from zero to nine, but I couldn't include four, five, six. So it would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six are all inside B. So seven, eight, nine. Those are all of the not B. And of course you can get crazy and you can say, well, A union B or not A union B. So remember A union B, let me erase my little markings here. A union B is everything inside A or B. So a, not A union B would be anything that's not inside A or B, which would be zero, two, three, eight, nine. So all of those values on the outside. I could do A intersect B and not. And again, A intersect B is just this part in the middle. So not A intersect B would be everything else, which would be zero, one, two, three, not four, because that's the one in the middle, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So hopefully we understand the concept of a complement. And we're going to now look at the difference. And the difference is essentially the set containing all of the elements of set A that are not in set B. So here I'm looking at A minus B being the set of all X's such that X is in A but X is not in B. So in this case, looking at A minus B in my picture, my only options are one, four, and seven, but I need to take away any of those that are also in B. So my solution would just be one and seven. So that is the, or those are the values that I would use for the difference. So essentially I'm just subtracting anything that is contained in B. I couldn't include numbers like zero, two, three, et cetera, because those were not contained in A to begin with. So it's just like a normal subtraction question. Here is a question that I would really like for you to try. This is just a great practice question, uh, like you might see in homework. Um, just to make sure you understand the concepts of, you know, subtraction or complements or unions, etc. So go ahead and press play and try this question and I'm sorry, press pause, try this question and then press play to see if your answers match up with mine. So before I get started, I really am going to rewrite set B in roster notation. So I'm just going to list out all of the elements of that set. And again, I don't care for writing them more than once. So even though I've got two E's, I'm only writing E once and then M, A, I've already used T and then H. And again, if I wanted to, I could certainly write those in alphabetical order, but really it's not going to matter. So my first question asked me to find the union and the union is kind of like the cup and the cup contains all of the elements in either set. So set A is A, E, I, O, U. And then I'm going to also include everything in set B, but I don't have to rewrite A, E, I, O, or U. So I've got D, S, C, R, don't have to write E, T, M, H. 
So all of those elements would belong to the union. The intersection would be only those elements that are in both A and in B. So I can see here I've got an A in both sets, I've got an E in both sets, I've got an I in both sets, I don't have an O, and I don't have a U. So the intersection would just be A, E, I, and the O and U are not contained in the word discrete math. A minus B, actually I should have left those. My bad. Unfortunately, it's not going to let me just undo. So, M, A, H. All right, so now I'm looking at A minus B, which is essentially starting with A, E, I, O, U. I'm saying if I take away any values that are in B, what would I be left with? Well, it's kind of nice because I've already found the intersection, and I know that B includes the values of AEI, and so if I was taking A, which is AEIOU, and taking away anything in set B, I would be left with OU. The other way around, starting with B, but getting rid of anything that they have in common, which again, the only things they have in common are AEI, would be the set of everything left over, which would be D. Let me just go ahead and underline that E. I and A. So anything I didn't underline would be D, S, C, R, T, M, H. My next question says the complement of the intersection of A and B. And so remember the U is the universe of all of the letters of the alphabet. And I'm saying anything that's not in here that is in the alphabet. So my solution there would be B, C, D, so I skipped A, I skipped E, F, G, H, I'm going to skip I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, with commas in between all. And essentially, that's all of the letters of the alphabet that are not contained in the intersection. So here was the intersection, A-E-I. It's all of the rest of the letters. And last question, is A a subset of B? That is to say, do all of these values belong in B? And it doesn't matter if B has extras, but this is obviously or hopefully, obviously, a no, because we already determined previously that O and U are not contained in discrete math. So therefore, no, A is not a subset of B. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. We are going to move on to talk about some set identities and how to prove them in the next video.